Hello everyone, my name is Xiaoping Li. I'm a software engineer here at Sunrise Integration. And today I'm going to be telling you guys exactly what is MobX and why you should include it in your next project. Straight from the MobX website, MobX is a battle tested library that makes state management simple and scalable by transparently applying functional reactive programming. Wait, what? What is functional reactive programming? Let's simplify it down a bit. Let's tackle functional programming first. Functional programming is basically creating functions to tackle a specific problem instead of the more imperative way, which is a step-by-step -step approach. Well, what do I mean by all this? Let's actually take a look at an example. Okay, here is a React app setup. So the problem today we're going to solve is what is the sum of all the elements in the array? Here is our array here, const my numbers array one through five, okay? So let's go ahead and view the imperative programming approach first. For the imperative programming approach, you need to do one step at a time, right? So we set a variable called total equal to zero. Then we loop through each element of the array and add it to the total. Nice and simple. Then we go ahead and return the total here. So the imperative example equals our total here. As you can see up here, it's equal to 15. Okay. So let's take a look at the functional programming approach. Functional programming again is to create functions to solve our problems, right? So here I create a function called add numbers, which takes in a numbers array object. And we're going to go ahead and return the numbers array dots reduce so it takes in an accumulator and a current value accumulator is exactly the same as our total up here the current value will be the one we're currently on right so one two three as it loops we're going to basically take the total and basically add it to each element in the array the comma zero here is our initializer what we start out with so the very similar to the total up here we initialize it with zero and here we also start it with zero here now that the function is built we now need to call it so i create a new const called new total here call the function and pass in our numbers array above and i go ahead and return the new total here and as you can see it also returns 15 here okay so there's the two approaches imperative programming and functional programming Reactive programming means registering events and letting the program itself basically handle such events like um, keepstroke or mouse down, mouse up. Simple, right? So MobX is basically values that change over time. If you combine the two programming paradigms together, functional programming as well as reactive programming, you get exactly how MobX was built. So the logic behind MobX is anything that can be derived from the application state should be done automatically. Actions mutate state, in turn updates your values, and then triggers side effects like renders. And this loop continues and continues and continues. Very simple, right? To simply put it, the reasoning behind using a state management tool like MobX is so that you can separate concerns which in turn also makes it easier to read and maintain. So let's go ahead and dive into a scenario where we can take a better look at this. In React, each state is defined inside the component itself. So for example, component A will have a state that is independent of component B, but each instance of component A will also have its own independent states, meaning no sharing of states between components. In this example, we have a notifications component that contains a badge that shows the amount of unread notifications. We also have a left navigation bar that contains a notifications tab that also has a badge showing the unread notifications. How will we update both badges at the same time as well as keep them in sync? Well, you might think to yourself, how about having a parent component that holds all the state for your application? This might sound like a great idea in the beginning, but as your application becomes larger, 
that one component will as well, leading to many lines of unmanageable code. This is where state management tool comes into play. Upon adding MobX into your application, you are now able to add observers onto your components. This is the reactive programming part of MobX. With observers attached, they will now have access to any updated states within your store or stores. MobX will have a centralized location or a root store where all state is stored. But MobX not only supports a single source of truth, a single store, but multiple stores, meaning cleaner code, separation of concerns, as well as legible code. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a real example of how to incorporate MobX into our project. So this is a React Native project that has a bottom tab navigator, as well as three specific screens for this application. There's a home button, there's notifications, as well as profile, okay? So let's quickly go through home. Home is just basically a screen that has a button that allows us to make an API call to grab notifications. On the notification screen here, upon going into the notification screen, we make the API call, grab our notifications, and basically map out each one into its own individual components here. As you can see, there are three reminders here, so three different components here. As well as the bottom here, you can see that there's a three here, showing that we have three notifications here that we still need to read. So they need to click inside and go ahead and either remove the notification or go ahead and click inside and consider it as red. And then the profile here is just empty here. So let's go ahead and make the API call, press the button and see if our badge will update or the component will render on the notification page. Click. We are presented with the loading saying, signifying that we are indeed making the API call. And if we look at the console log here, we get a object back saying description as well as the title here. But if we look here on the bottom tab navigator, the badge did not update. Let's click inside to see if we indeed did receive that new uh, notification here. And as we can see, it did not render here. So what seems to be the problem here? Let's go ahead into the code and I'll explain there. So here is the notification screen or the notification component. As you can see, the data is initialized inside this specific screen. Therefore, we are not able to access this data outside of the specific component, right? Because each component renders its own independent states. And there are two use effects here that basically will uh, make the API call here. And this one will just basically update the batch for us here. So let's go ahead and install MobX and I'll show you guys exactly how we will incorporate this to make sure that we are able to access our states from anywhere in the app. Okay, so to start, let's go ahead and open a new terminal here and we're gonna go ahead and do yarn add MobX or if you're gonna use NPM, you can do NPM install MobX. After that, we also need another dependency which is yarn add mob x react light. Okay, now that we have our libraries installed and added, let's go ahead and make some option changes to mob x first of all. We're gonna go ahead and import the configure like so. Once we imported this, what option are we actually changing? We are changing the enforce actions here. So configure and the action we're changing is to enforce actions and we're going to set that to never, okay? So by default, the selected option is observed, which basically means that all the state that is observed needs to be changed through actions. So by setting it here to never, state can just basically be changed from anywhere. It allows us to be more flexible and in full control of exactly what we're doing to the store. And there's always, uh, there is also another option called always where state always needs to be changed through actions, not just things that are observed, okay? So let's go ahead and create our stores. Uh, over here on the SRC folder, let's go ahead and create a store folder. Inside the store folder, we're gonna go ahead and create a root store, like so. 
Okay, so now that we have our root store set up, let's go ahead and create our store. The store will be a class of our root store here, like so. And we need to call the constructor here as well. So in order to have the properties or the state within the store to be observed or um, handled, we need to go ahead and import our make auto observable method from MobX. This one will be called inside the constructor here. And we're just gonna pass this whole entire root store as the target. So now the root store and all its properties and state will now be observed by MobX automatically. Let's go ahead and create some state here. So we're gonna set loading to false. We're gonna set our data here to an empty array. And we're gonna also go ahead and create a badge count here, which is equal to zero at the beginning, right? And now one cool thing we can do is we can go ahead and create context, basically create a global state here so we can access this specific store without passing the specific store through the props. We could just call it through our use context method. So let's go ahead and create a new context here. Create context. We're gonna go ahead and import that from React, right, like so. And clean up a little bit. And on the bottom here, we're just gonna go ahead and export root store context. Equals, uh, create context is equal to a new root store, like so. And just like that, we created the context of the root store and now we can access it from anywhere within our application. All right, coming back to our notification screen, our notifications component. This will be our first component that we will be changing today. So what do we need to do? We need to first import the context, right? Because we created the context, now we need to use it. So let's go ahead and import the use context up here. And we're gonna go ahead and attach this to our root store like so. And we're gonna go ahead and use context of our root store context that we just created from earlier, right? And now we have all the properties of the root store within this specific component. But then one issue we're gonna have is that any state that is changed within the root store context or the root store itself will not re-render this specific notification. Like for example, we have our loading and our set loading here. This is our state, right? This will cause a re-render should the loading be true, right? Any changes to state. In order for us to have this exact functionality as a use state that is locally defined like this, we need to change or modify this specific component into an observer. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and import our observer like so from the library of MobX React Lite. And what we need to do here is just simply wrap the whole entire component here inside the observer, like so. And just like that, this component will now re-render should any root store properties or state change, right? So as you can see here, we have the two properties of loading and notification data. So these are already within our root store. So let's go ahead and make the appropriate changes here. We can go ahead and remove these two states. And now we have these errors that we need to fix. So let's go ahead and quickly fix them. So how do we actually call properties or state within our root store? It's very simple. Just type root store, the error will be made above. And as you can see, IntelliSense already says that here we have our properties within the root store itself. So here we want the loading, and we're just gonna set this to true. Changing state is exactly just like that, just that simple. So let's go ahead and make the necessary modifications. Right now we're all set. Let's go ahead and reset this. And now let's check that it's actually working. So let's go to the notifications here. We're gonna click and exactly like just like that. We receive the updates and we go ahead and update the store itself. 
Now, one of the things I did mention is that we want to keep things very clean, right? So what we can do here is that we can take out these specific methods and put them onto our store and just call the specific methods or the functions from the store itself. Okay, now that we're back onto the notification screen, we want to go ahead and clean up the use effects here and take out all this line of code and put it onto the root store itself. We want to separate our concerns. Just like so, we have extracted out our API call here from the use effect, and let's go ahead and call it in the use effect. And just like that, we extracted out the function and put it onto the root store. Now it's much cleaner and more legible. Okay, so let's quickly go through the steps required. Number one, yarn or npm install mobx and mobx react lite. Number two, create your root store and create context. Number three, change your components that require state within your root store to observers. Number four, use the use context method to pull the root store context or the root store. And number five, start using your store. It's really that simple. Okay, now that we finished changing all our components to observers, as well as linking them to the root store, let's go ahead and test it again. So let's go into the notifications here. It makes the API call and updates the badge as well as render the appropriate components here. Let's go back to the home and go ahead and retrieve one more data here. As we retrieve the data, we can then update the badge because this is pulling from the root store, right? We can keep doing it. And again, we're gonna update the batch. Let's go inside the notifications page. And as you can see, we do have the five notifications being rendered here. And there you go. This is how you can set up MobX and basically set up a store, link everything to your store, change your components into observers, and basically pull data from the store itself. Nice and simple. So this sounds good and all, but what are some pros and cons of using state management tool like MobX. So let's go ahead and take a look at some pros first. Number one, separation of statefulness of the app for component rendering. The code is more legible and easier to maintain because of separation of concerns, right? Two, it's also easier for someone else to come into the code itself due to its ease of use. If you have used a state management tool before, you will know exactly where everything is stored. Three, a root store or a global store or even many stores as MobX supports many stores. You might want to have each component contain their own store that talks to the root store. Number four, reduce boilerplate code. As there are some other state management libraries such as Redux, that has a lot of boilerplate code. MobX reduces the boilerplate code by keeping it simple. So let's go ahead and take a look at some cons. Number one, sometimes simplicity and without strict rules can lead to a very unmaintainable code. Meaning, if it's that easy to change, sometimes it's just that easy to go wrong as well. Number two, it's harder to debug as things are done automatically. It may be difficult to pinpoint the source of a bug when things are being done automatically. And that's a wrap. Hopefully we taught you something about MobX and why it's an amazing tool to include in your current or even next project. So again, MobX makes it simple, easy to use, and of course, it provides architectural freedom and state management. I'll see you guys in the next one.